Hi, Shay Given here. You're watching Irish Football Fan TV. Hello and welcome back to Irish Football Fan TV. Today I'm here with Eddie O'Mahony from IrishSoccerShirts.com and he's also after bringing out a new book called 40 Shades of Green. Where can it be purchased? It's available exclusively on FAIShop.com. It's priced at 24.99 and it's going to be released officially on the 12th of November but you can pre-order it now. Um, there's only 300 copies being printed at the minute. There's about only 70 left. That's been the response to it so far. So if you're looking for a Christmas present for that Irish football fan in your life, FAIShop.com is the place to go to. Okay, well you know where to get it you now, lads. Um, and, and ladies. And ladies. Um, how did you come about um, with Irish Soccer Shirts? It all started in 2002. I went to Japan to follow the team at the World Cup. I'd always been a huge Irish football fan, even as a kid. Um, when I was growing up, replica shirts were only starting to become popular. Yeah. Um, so my first initiation was getting my first Irish kit in 1983. I think I was probably five or six years of age. The full Irish O'Neill's kit with the long sleeves and everything like that. And I just thought it was an incredible feeling of wearing the same stuff that the likes of Liam Brady would wear. Um, I'm a little bit older than you, so I... We grew up before Twitter and Facebook and all that sort yeah. of stuff. So if you wanted to find out about an Irish player, you have to buy Shoot magazine or Match. Yeah. And they used to have these pictures. Are they still going? They could be now, but they've probably gotten overtaken. I think Match is anyway. I don't think Shoot is. They've been overtaken with, with the internet and whatever, but uh, I used to have all the pictures on my wall, and one of them was Liam Brady wearing his O'Neill's Ireland shirt, and I just thought he was the business. So all throughout my life, I'd always buy the, the replica football shirts, and then I was very fortunate in 2002 to be in Japan. We played Germany in the World Cup after the game. I was even more fortunate to be back in the team hotel. And we were in the bar after that game. And uh, it was pretty loud and a pretty long night. And Stephen Reid gave me one of his shirts from the tournament, which was incredible. And I came home, showed it to all my friends, bored people to death at five aside for a couple of weeks. And then eventually... As said, you do. As you would. And then eventually said, it should really be in a museum. So I tried to find out where the Irish Football Museum was. And sadly, still isn't one. Um, so I decided at age 21, 22, that I would set about creating my own Irish football museum. We're certainly working towards trying to create one. And that's where IrelandSoccerShirts.com started. Okay. And so after you, after you got into the, the Stephen Reid jersey, how did you kind of go about getting get, going into getting more? Getting more. Uh, it started, I said to myself, I'd love to get the away shirt it, you know there wasn't a grand plan it was just I'll get the away shirt and then I'll have the home and away shirt and then I'll get the goalkeeper shirt from that one the internet's been great you know um, eBay and, and places like that and as the website and the museum have kind of taken off a bit more um, I've actually been able to approach players and different things like that and they've been fantastic and have donated items yeah. to the museum and it's kind of snowballed to a point now where Pretty much every moment of Irish history internationally from 1966 right to up to the present day is secured um, and I'm working on trying to backfill the spaces from 1921 to 1966 to complete the set for the centenary of the FAI in 2021. Okay, and have you got, have you got a location for this museum or is it something you're, you're working towards? Sadly, it's just a virtual museum at the minute. Um, when the Aviva Stadium was built and opened in 2010, unfortunately there wasn't a space allocated in it for a museum which right, i think is yeah. a huge shame i know it's a co-owned stadium at the irfu so it was deemed unable to, to kind of fill a space like that which was a real shame so part of the campaign the website and 40 shades of green is about is trying to make sure that we promote our irish football history daily Mount park has been redeveloped and um, there's talk of being ready in 2021 it's a spiritual home of Irish football and it would be an absolute shame if that stadium is redeveloped and a proper fit for purpose museum for Irish football isn't included in it. So this is what the project is about. It's trying to raise the profile of it and uh, sadly I've no home for it yet but we'll keep on working on it. Maybe we get a petition signed. You could get a petition signed. I think... Um, start know, a campaign. Start a campaign. Well the website and the book have been my campaign as such so far because a lot of people talk about doing something and say we should do something so I decided to come at it at a different angle yeah. I said I'd collect everything first and have it mm. and now try and find out 
a place, a suitable place for it. I'm not talking about a 10,000 square foot museum, but the, there's over 200 different museums in Ireland dedicated to all parts of Irish football history and culture, sporting and uh, all other aspects of it. The Irish football teams contributed hugely to the nation, uh, to sport in general, and for some reason it's never been, our history hasn't been put together, preserved, and more importantly displayed for future generations. I mean, we're in local clubhouse here where where adults and kids from all around. Shout out to Broadford Rovers. Broadford Rovers um, come and play, and it's a brilliant amenity. And um, don't tell me that the under eights, nines, tens, and twelves, and fifteens wouldn't be inspired by seeing some of these shirts behind them and realizing that if they train hard enough and work hard enough, they too could play for the Irish football team. So there's a there's a link there to to the sport, and it's something that just I think needs to be worked at and brought into the public's attention. Um, Munster Rugby have a museum in Toma Park. Mondello Park has a racing museum. Um, the IFA up in Belfast redeveloped Windsor Park. And they've got a, a historical and cultural centre in their new stadium. And somehow Irish football's history has been just a bypass, bypassed. Yeah. It's no one's fault, it's just it's just happened. Um, so no one's really got a hold of it. Someone's got a hold of it. And I think by trying to put everything together in one place, people can see that the history is there. Um, and how do we work forward now to try and preserve it and maintain it? And that's the challenge. Yeah, now before we kind of egg on to the book, I just want to ask about, for the people who are watching, just um, the shirts, who 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 had owned them? Yeah. And what games they're from. Okay, so we'll start in the middle. That's a fairly famous and iconic style of shirt. Absolutely, um, yeah. It was worn when we played Macedonia away in 1997. Um, people might remember it for the shirt itself. It's the first time Ireland wore a, a bright orange kit, and the second people might reason people might remember is we lost, and uh, Jason McAteer nearly decapitated a Macedonian player with a flying kick and got sent off. So that shirt is pretty iconic. It's so iconic, um, the Irish team actually had a training shirt, but I had a Macedonia yeah. written yeah. on the front of it. Um, so in terms of Irish folklore, that's pretty much up there. This who's one, whose shirt is it? Terry Feel. Oh, Terry Field, yeah, he's Field. actually a fan, of, he's a fan of the show. Of course he is, Terry's got great taste. The one behind me is a very historic shirt for Irish football. Um, it was worn by David Kelly on a senior international debut in November 1987 against Israel at Dalyman Park. Not only was it his debut, David Kelly scored a hat-trick on it, and he's the first and only Irish international to score a hat-trick on his debut, and he's one of only a handful of our, our international footballers ever scored three or more goals on their debut for their country. So that's a, f- a fairly historic one. There's some history for you. Right? Some real some real history. Um, and that one over there... I don't the think end, that needs much of an explanation, but I, I'll actually go ahead. I don't, there's not much needs to be said about it. Um, some of the younger viewers are just may not know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Richard Dunn, famously, 2011, he played Russia away. Um, and he cut his face open and... There was blood all over his shirt and they had to get it. On the racing and, track, wasn't it? And the greatest piece around the racing track and they had to find a replacement jersey for him. The way for regulations meant that they had to have a blood sub jersey ready, which they had, but it didn't have to carry didn't the number. number yeah. Richard Dunn went to come back on. The referee told him to go back off. They didn't have a second jersey. It was a back and forth with the with Back the and forth the lines. It was a bit like John Aldridge when he was trying to get on in yeah. 94. Yeah. And Alan Kelly, the goalkeeping coach and former international himself, wisely took out a black pen and wrote the number five on the front and back of the shirt. And Richard went back on to play probably the game of his Irish career. And yeah. Probably it's the game he's, he's most renowned for. It is. There's been, a few, there's been a few Irish footballers who are probably linked to certain games. Don Given scored a hat-trick in 74 against Russia. McAteer Holland. McAteer, I'm probably going to say Roy Keane Holland for his well, performance. Yeah, my, and Mark and, Obama as well. Uh, Paul, McG- Mark o- Paul McGrath against Italy in 94. Yeah. Where, they're, where how they played drove the team to to a famous result and it can't be underestimated not only did he play well in the game it was the first time we ever got a point in Russia or the USSR whatever you want to call it yeah. and we ended up qualifying for our first European championships in over 20 odd years so it's a it's a momentous game but it's a yeah that's that's a real piece of Irish football history there oh there you go now you brought us in this little 
cover here. That's the cover of the book, is it? That's the cover of the book, so I'm actually... That's a printed cover. It's just a printed cover. The book itself is going to be 224 pages. Um, it's a hardback cover, so it's a, it's a, it's a proper book. It's going to be a coffee table style book. And it's going to chart the history of the Irish shirt from Jack Charlton's first game in 1986 against Wales. And there's great symmetry to it. The last game is against Wales just the other week when James McLean scored. So the very first shirt in the book is actually Liam Brady's shirt that he wore. He was the Ireland captain on the day. Yeah. For Jack's first game, um, we didn't win. We lost 1-0. And the thing that I like about the symmetry of how the book finishes, it finishes um, nearly 32 years later. We play Wales away, and this time we win 1-0. So there's a every moment of Irish and football history, Bulls, right? every moment of Irish football history in between it, all six tournaments, every single shirt style, most of the goalkeeper shirt styles, and all of the famous track suits or suits or shoes and goalkeepers' gloves. Basically, any moment of history that you can remember watching the Irish team play is featured in the yeah. book. Now, you have the kind of space, it's a special feature, it's dedicated to James Nolan. It is. The website irelandsoccershirts.com has been dedicated to James since 2012. Um, I was a first time father myself in 2012. I had a six month old boy and I was in Poland. Um, and the story of James, you know, after the tragedy happened, I could put myself in his shoes as a fan who traveled to an away tournament with your friends, the excitement, the, you know, you're 21, 22 years of age. Oh, sure. You know, you have your whole life in front of you. And for him not to come home, I, I just thought it was heartbreaking. And sometimes, people see a tragedy or they, something happens and Irish people are great, you know, you want to help and people want to, you know, and, and short maybe of writing to somebody, which I did, I wrote to the, the Nolan family and just expressed my condolences. Um, I was in a bit of a unique and position. Did you, did, you, uh, did you know them? I didn't know James at all, I didn't know the family. Um, it's the first and only time I've ever written to to somebody when something like this happens. Mm, it's a nice touch. It, I guess it got to me, you know, I just it really, I was thinking, that's just so unfair. And I was thinking, how could I do something, a small crumb of comfort, nothing major. How could I say, listen, the Irish fans haven't forgotten about you. So in 2012, I dedicated the website to James and the, the main part of the museum is called the James Nolan Memorial Collection. And I wanted to see how I could keep his name alive and attached to the Irish team. So last year in 2016, I spoke to Jimmy, James's dad, and I said, listen, I'd love to do a book dedicated to, to James but I'm only doing it if you know the family say they're it's, gonna, okay. it's okay and it's they're going to okay. support it and they were brilliant they really got in behind it so we started off with uh, an idea no budget no publisher but just the intent to sort of try and do something for him and it's really shown the book has come about I think because it, it shows the real spirit within the Irish football community the FAI were very good to me they came in and rode in behind the project um, and that was a that was a great initial step to get them to sort of say, yeah, listen, we're aware of the project and we'll help you however we can. After all, he was an Irish fan supporting the Irish team, so they were great to get behind us. Then we needed to get the nuts and bolts of the book together. So Jonathan Courtney, who's the managing director out in Top Line Sports, who look after New Balance contract and they used to have the Umbro contract for Ireland, came on board and they were very helpful. Three Ireland then came on and they did a little ad for the website and the call up and gave a little donation to the book as well. Jimmy Nolan got on to Robbie Keane and said, listen, would you, would you like to do the forward for the book? A lot of people know footballers and they know they're very good and they know that they're good people and stuff like that. And Robbie Keane has been excellent to the Nolan family. He's been really, really supportive of them. Uh, he's texted them, contacted them, wished them all sorts of goodwill and thoughts and everything that you might remember his famous shirt for LA Galaxy that he held up after the tragedy yeah. was dedicated to James and that features in the book as well and he's, a great, he's a great role model ah, he's, for, he's, for he's brilliant any, any you know, and, and so a lot of a lot of people don't see the good work that he does for charities like a lot of Irish footballers he kind of goes under the radar that sort of stuff he does a bit he's very cool about it and yeah. uh, once Jimmy got in touch with him there was no hesitation Robbie came on board and wrote the forward for the book we're very lucky then and um, how do you get it published? We found a company called Lettertech in Cork, an Irish publishing company, 
they've been brilliant they rolled in behind it I needed to get a cover I had no graphic designer for it so there's a, a great graphic designer in Galway called Morgan O'Brien who does the Galway United okay. program covers he came in and helped with the, the cover which I think is you know it's pretty distinctive it's got the the font from our 1988 shirt number and then the old kind of O'Neill style crest running through it so he's done a brilliant job and there's a guy called Dennis Hurley who's a big uh, he, he runs Museum of Jerseys on Twitter it's a huge uh, hall of information about shirts he came in and put in a brilliant piece in the book that actually chronicles every single shirt from 86 to 2017 and all these people gave their time and effort for little or no money at all so to actually get the book put together and out and ready I think is a testament to people who are doing it for James it's not yeah. not my book we just offered sure, the, we just also. offered it we just offered the vehicle to try and get it together and people have rode in behind it and I think that shows the sense of community in Irish football fans a lot of people saw the project and have helped and uh, they've done so for no money or anything like that so it's been brilliant yeah um, now you were saying it's, it's, it's you can actually get it on the FBI website now the book itself yeah again I was looking for a, a retail outlet to sell it in and FAI shop.com which is the official retail partner of the FAI were fantastic and said listen we'll take over that we look after the whole process for you so they've done everything it's online now you can buy it on FAI shop.com but to have that level of support was fantastic because if you had to get it into a retailer it would cost lots of money I've tried to keep the price of the book as low as possible it's twenty four ninety nine. Um, absolute steal it's a steal there's only 300 copies and this is the most important thing absolutely only 300 copies being printed um, so as we speak we're about a week away from launch date as far as I know there's only about 70 copies left so even in the pre-order phase the response has been brilliant from Irish fans and stuff like that so if you're looking for a, a unique present and I know I'm, I'm trying to promote the book but if there's an Irish football fan in your life or you're Chris Kindle and work or you know yeah. you have 30 quid to spend on someone this is something really unique and unusual that they'll have and I think it would make an excellent present and I think also and it's in, it's in honour of, a, of an it's Irish it's in honour of an Irish football fan it's not a commercial project for myself I'm not making any money out of it you know this is just trying to remember a fellow fan and keep his name associated with the team That's I think that's absolutely brilliant um, how many weeks till Christmas? How many six. weeks till Christmas? About six, six, six weeks. So there you go. Like if you, if, if within the next six weeks, if you're struggling to get something for, uh, for say your your father or your or your partner or your son or cousin or whoever, um, get onto f a i shop dot e and spend the twenty four ninety nine. I'm sure they won't. Uh, they won't cost much for the. No, and hopefully they hopefully there won't be um too many left. I said the book officially gets released. On November the twelfth. It's already what two hundred thirty gone. Two hundred and thirty gone. So there's only seventy left. So I'd have to get on it. I'd have to, be hot I have to absolutely. Yeah. The laptop well now when I go home. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's absolutely brilliant, Eddie. Um, just wanted to get your thoughts quickly on the game. Um, on Saturday the first leg. Yes. How how do you, how do you see that playing out? I we've been very sort of practical under O'Neill. Um, I'm a, a great believer in just results. At the minute, I'm watching. Ireland play since I'm as an adult for the last 18 years I've had loads of heartbreak on it um, I don't really care about how we do it I don't care what system he entails I don't care who he plays just we're going to win and we're going to win on penalties at home and it'll be the first time Ireland have ever qualified for a tournament at home every other time it's either been through results yeah. or we've been playing somewhere else it's going to be difficult um, I think we're all happy with the draw yeah, certainly. I feel like we need to score though. I think we need an away goal. I t- yeah. Regardless of the result, we need an away goal. I think we do. I think Denmark are probably Denmark looking at that too, and they're thinking the same thing. If we keep it tight, we'll definitely go to the Aviv and score one. Yeah. So I would fancy a nil nil in Denmark, and uh, I've got more one all, just to be safe. Just to be safe, well, like yeah, but uh, I can't see there being a huge amount of chances and a huge amount yeah. of goals. I think it's going to be fairly dour. It's going to be fairly uh, intense and. Hopefully we can nullify their sort of major threats like we did and we have done throughout the tournament. Yeah. And uh, I mean, we face bigger teams and got results as no, well. No, it's no, just because no, it's, it's over two-legged periods. It's a two-legged it's, thing. It's, um, it's one of them, you know. 
I don't think we're afraid, and I don't think any of the, the players are, are necessarily fearful going into the game. Yeah. So um, they all seem quite pumped out. They're all, I know it's on social media. They're all coming up and saying like massive games. I think it will be drilled into. I, them. I think if I was very fortunate enough to go to Japan in two thousand and two to watch a World Cup with Ireland playing in it, we're playing football. You know, a hundred years nearly internationally, we've qualified for three World Cups. This is the biggest tournament in sport. It's probably one of the biggest events in all sports that goes on. And we're two games away from qualifying. I don't think people can underestimate how much the players must know how really, yeah. really, really close they are to something special. So I don't think Martin O'Neill will have any difficulty uh, getting them up for the game. It's tactically, can we be smart enough, particularly at home, actually, funnily enough, I worry for us more at home than yeah. I do away. I think when we go away, we're fine. Just sometimes when we're at home, will we have enough to break them down? Particularly, as I said, if we, if we come away losing 1-0 in the first leg, will we be able to break them down? And that's that's the tricky part. So when we're, when we're at home in, in this coming leg on the Tuesday, um, I think I'd rather us be 0-0 nil, nil, um, and to see where we can go but again the key players are going to be McLean for us definitely he's been our talisman so um, yeah. if we can keep everyone fit and David Myler back for the second game, second game um, we have an awful chance like a real real chance to qualify at home for a World Cup and can you imagine the atmosphere in the Aviv on Tuesday night if you're if you're leaving and we're going to the World Cup in Russia special special times yeah, I don't think I'll be turning up for work on Wednesday could be tricky could be tricky. It's so hard either way. Uh, but we'll be talking kind of more about that on our uh, preview show this week, so don't forget to check that out. Uh, Eddie, thank you very much for coming on the Thanks show. On. It's been an absolute pleasure. Uh, guys, a couple of things before we go. Don't forget to subscribe. We're aiming for that 1,000 subscribers before Christmas. We're up to 656 now, so we're not that far away, so it's definitely achievable. Uh, at the end of the video, there'll be a little bubble that'll come up around here. And uh, don't forget to uh, click the subscribe button. And uh, thank you very much for watching Irish Football Fan TV. And also, don't forget to go and buy the book. There's only 70 copies left. Only 24.99. Absolute bargain. And it's for a great cause. Thank you very much for watching Irish Football Fan TV.